creative, an artist. He was many, many things. Another. An extraordinary, clever, humble, very, very humble man. You see Ray's influence um, everywhere. Harry Housen was Neil Armstrong. You know, he was the first man in the moon with this stuff. I would say Ray was one of the most influential people of cinema. How Dad got interested in films early on was um, Grandma took him to see King Kong. And when I came out, I haven't been the same since. So you can see what an influence a, a, a film can be on a young mind. And uh, I think that was when the light came on and he said, that's what I want to do. Can you imagine just coming out of the depression when everything was so tough? How could you not be inspired if you saw that as a kid for the first time? There's a scene where Kong fights the T-Rex. <laughs> the music is screaming away and suddenly these two confront each other and the music stops. And these two characters are weighing each other up, looking at each other. They're thinking. When I first saw that, I thought, my God, I know that those are rubber skeletons, but they're thinking. It just all seemed very, uh, very real. And, and, and Ray was inspired by that and talked a lot about um, how that film changed his life. To have seen film itself and then to have seen King Kong must have blown your mind. And of course, Ray saw that and said, yeah, I want to be part of that. And his parents said, OK, fine, which is amazing in, in, in those days, you know. When I found out about the uh, glories of stop-motion animation, I started to experiment in my garage. And Grandma and Grandpa would, would help him. Grandpa was very technical. He could do all the engineering and, and all the metal stuff. And Grandma did a lot of the costumes and, and other things. So they were both hands-on and very, very supportive to Dad. I think it would have been so much harder for him if he didn't have that support. Well, after King Kong, of course, Willis O'Brien was my hero. I called him up at MGM one time, and he invited me over to the studio. So I loaded some of my dinosaurs into a suitcase, and he gave me some wonderful advice. He said, your Tigosaurus's legs look like sausages. And Dad didn't take it as an insult. He studied, and he did night school. He went to art school. And later on, he, he got to do all sorts of different things. Ray's uh, first film, Mighty Joe Young, that he made with uh, Willis O'Brien. Um, I love that movie because um, Joe was a little bit uh, smaller than King Kong, so he was like, uh, he was like friend size. Don't shoot! Joe, drop it! Drop it! Don't hurt him! You really relate to uh, Joe, he wasn't just a special effect. You really kind of care about him. I, when I watched it, and still when I watch it today, you actually forget pretty early on that um, he's not real. All right, Joe. To be able to give a thought process to an inanimate object, that's what we try to do. And Ray succeeded brilliantly in all his characters. His creatures have a unique place, not just because of their design and look, because of course that's the first thing that strikes you, but the performance as well. It must have been the wind. When you stop and look at the creatures and they're actually acting in those scenes, that's what gives it believability. What makes his 
characters convincing is these little details. He had dynamics in his action. He, he was not afraid of slow movements and quick movements and quirky movements. He was acting those characters. I mean, if you think about Ray Harryhausen and him acting out all these creatures, I mean, he, he was. <laughs> he was all those creatures a little bit. He has a very individual style of animating. It's actually very elegant. He really puts himself and his soul into his work. All of them creatures like the baboon and the, and the trog. They all had these wonderful personalities. I felt sorry for a lot of them because some of them would be in the wrong place at the wrong time and Dad would dispatch them and it was like, oh God, why did you kill that one? There's a total humanity to the Harryhausen characters and even something like the troglodyte and Sinbad. Like, every now and then, it'll do this really be sad motion with its eyes. We are friends. You know, it just likes the girl. It's, it's just quite a basic character, you know, but it's kind of weirdly lovable. And then when he sacrifices himself for everybody at the end, it's quite sad. And it's a piece of clay, you know, but it, it works, it's acting. Although they're, they might be like, um, used in a kind of scary way. I think they were all had a very human side to them in some ways. <laughs> I think there was a lot of emotion in them, um, which you didn't really see much in those old films. Even Flying Saucers, he managed to get a character. Uh, they weren't cold, there was a feeling about them. I think one of the joys of stop motion is you always know it's a puppet. And you think, yeah, I know that's a puppet, but wow. Look at the movement of that tail. Gloves, what are my gloves? With a lot of his creatures, he has specific movements, and to this day, they're iconic. You know, a swish of a tail, or a tentacle moving, or a look, or a posture. The way he's shifting his weight, or he's looking at a character, or, or he does something with his hands and his elbows that distinctly ray. So he is in his characters. He'll be forever in those characters. In a way, it's a shame we don't have lots of video from the onset footage to have seen these actors fighting nothing. And it takes a very special sort of acting. I think also what it takes is Ray being on set when they're doing those rehearsals. It was great watching him because he was really hands-on and he did all sorts of things so that the actors could get a visual and react in the right way. It was an amazing experience and I think Ray would agree. It was, had a magical feel to it. I remember speaking to him, I, I said, what, what is it about your films that, that you know, you love. He said, for me, it's like a fairy tale. He actually, there was a, there was a encouragement to come into his world. There was an invitation into his world and we just jumped right in. Our director was Gordon Hessler, but when it came to doing the special effects scenes, then Ray stepped in and he stepped in with such a plum. I think the storyboards really helped because the director and, and other people could, oh, okay, that I'm supposed to be looking at this, and they'd get a, a clear idea of, of these creatures. This is what the character's going to look like. This is how he's going to move. It's going to be loud and it's going to be heavy, and, you know, you kind of get the sense of what he wanted. When we had to attack a dinosaur or a pterodactyl, he would be on a flatbed truck with this stick and we would be following him in our bits, you know, all sort of bedraggled with our spears. And we're going, ha, 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 and that, it was just hysterical. <laughs> 
from my eye line when I was with the centaur. He painted this great big wooden eye he'd painted and nailed on. So I had this eye to follow and he'd talk you through what he wanted because obviously he, he put his creatures to your acting. He was great to work with. He didn't know exactly. And if it wasn't quite right, he'd, he'd say, could, you know, could we do it again? Could we try it a slightly different way? And because you wanted to make it work for the film, then you did, and, and it all just came together. When you saw it, you couldn't believe what had been put on. I was utterly amazed at what he had created, you know, at what we were had been fighting. Little teeny things that turn out to be these monsters on screen. I think the interesting thing about him is how he combines them in, the, in that he links the style. They really fit together. It's not just, oh, here's some animation, here's some live action. They really speak to each other. It's genius. I mean, that was rare. Dinosaurs and skeletons attract lots of fans and very enthusiastic students. And he always had time for everybody. And I think that's what he'll be remembered for as well, for his kindness of always talking to students. His house in London, he always invited people in, which, <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful. Why he, he didn't know that his name was in the, the telephone directory, I do not know, but he was the only Harryhausen. And, and sure enough, yes, people did call. And he answered the phone, and it really grew from, from there. Well, model animation is basically the same principle as the animated cartoon. Only instead of using flat drawings, you have a model such as this. I contacted Ray because I was making a documentary and I thought this would make a terrific subject. So when he answered the phone himself, I was quite taken aback. And when he invited me to the house, I was surprised. And he spent lots of time with me and he didn't need to. He's very much a giver of his time. And although he wasn't making films at this point, he didn't really need to entertain a film student. I think because he had that encouragement, which was so important, he just wanted them to have that passion and love. So he took the time. Pegasus. You know, at the end of um, Clash, I think he just knew that Things were moving on and uh, there was a younger generation with different, faster ideas. I think there was a sadness about not animating anymore, but there's a lot of pressure when you're making a film. So I, I think it was tinged with relief as well, not having the burden of a very large project. In those days, it was so jolly hard and he did it and s sort of single-handedly and people believed in him and took inspiration, you know. To me, there's a little bit of Ray in virtually everything in one way or another. I mean, his uh, impact um, and uh, reach is absolutely um, immeasurable. I see that obviously in the works of George Lucas. sense of adventure and fantasy in the films of Steven Spielberg. In, in uh, the works of uh, James Cameron. Peter Jackson. Come on, I mean, you know, Lord of the Rings wouldn't have happened without uh, Ray Harryhausen. In the same way that, uh, you know, Ray was inspired by uh, King Kong, um, generations of filmmakers, and not just filmmakers. No cheese, Gromit. Writers, comic book artists. I mean, every, every kind of creative person. Harryhausen's an immeasurable influence, you know? I mean, I, I see Sinbad as as important to my career as Spy Who Loved Me. Spider-Man, Superman, Star Wars. Hold tight, Princess. He carried the torch through to the Spielbergs and the Lucases and Marvel and all the modern stuff, you know.
The movies are, are still with us because they're brilliant and they're unlike anything else. I think it's a shared adventure. You go on a journey wanting to be told a story. As he would say, just wonderful fairy tales that he brought to life and made his creatures live for that time. It was like he was making the best toys in the world and playing with them better than any of us could have ever played with them. Seeing that as a kid, it was like impossible not to be swept up in the magic of it because he was feeling it and it was beaming out the screen at us, even in a house in Coat Bridge watching it on television. It's mind-blowing, really. It's very humbling. I don't think Dad could get over that, that he made such a big impact on all these wonderful animators and... Um, directors, they got so inspired by Dad because he got inspired by a black and white film. And now they're inspired by all his films and his techniques. So it's sort of like passing the baton on. Um, it's, it's, it's wonderful.